Over the last 10 years, the Department of Radiology at the University of Florida College of Medicine has conducted a simulation-based evaluation of radiology resident competence in critical care imaging. 310 residents interpreted this case of necrotizing soft tissue infection of leg as one of 65 cases during an eight-hour simulated on-call shift with a median score of one out of 10 and an overall average score of 2.47 out of 10. Overall, the average number of points lost out of 10 to observational discipline was 6.53. At the same time, one points were lost due to interpretive errors on the part of the residents. We define an effective report to be one which achieves scores between seven and 10. In terms of letter grades, this would be an A or a B. In this most missed case, 6% of residents produced effective reports. We define a report having a critical error to be one with scores between zero and two. In terms of letter grades, this would be an F or a D. In this most missed case, 64% of residents produced reports with critical errors. This is an MRI of the left calf in a one-year-old with leg swelling. So I'm showing the T2 fat saturated images on the right and the T1 post-contrast images with fat suppression on the left. There is edema in the subcutaneous fat about the calf. This demonstrates enhancement. Together, those findings are concerning for cellulitis. The edema extends down to the investing fascia overlying the calf. There's also enhancing perimyceal edema about multiple muscle groups in the calf. This enhancing edema extends along numerous intermuscular fascial planes. Anteriorly, there is non-enhancing fluid intensity along the investing fascia. Also, there is non-enhancement along the transverse intermuscular septum posteriorly. Once we start seeing extensive enhancement or lack of expected enhancement along deep fascial planes, that is when we must consider fasciitis. While there are other causes of fasciitis, in the emergency setting, one must consider a necrotizing fasciitis or more generally necrotizing soft tissue infection. There's no clear evidence for synovitis in this case, nor is there evidence to suggest osteomyelitis. So emergent surgical consultation should be recommended. This case should be given an acuity ranking of emergent and should be immediately communicated to the referring provider. So we don't typically see necrotizing soft tissue infection on MRI. CT is usually chosen in, the, in this clinical setting because the patient can get on the scanner quickly. However, CT can be pretty unhelpful in either making or excluding the diagnosis of necrotizing soft tissue infection. MRI is more accurate than CT, but does take some time to get the patient on the scanner, which decreases its value. That being said, necrotizing soft tissue infection is sometimes imaged with MRI, either in less clinically apparent cases, in patients with altered mental status, or in institutions that have readily accessible MRI. So there was a nice article in the June 2011 issue of Radiology that discusses the MRI findings of necrotizing soft tissue infection. The lead author, last name for that article is Kim, K-I-M. This article showed that patients with necrotizing soft tissue infection demonstrated a higher frequency of five findings. One, thickening of deep fascial planes. Two, low signal intensity along the deep fascial planes on T2-weighted imaging. Three, non-enhancement in areas of signal abnormality along the fascial planes. Four, extensive involvement of the deep fascia. And five, involvement of three or more compartments in one extremity. Our patient demonstrated many of these findings. So this was surgically proven necrotizing soft tissue infection with extensive areas of necrotic subcutaneous fat, deep fascia, and muscle. MRSA was cultured.